Family Theatre presents Irene Dunn, Victor Jory, and Rita Johnson. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theatre, presents Crossroads of Christmas, starring Victor Jory and Rita Johnson. To introduce the drama, here is your hostess, Irene Dunn. Thank you, thank you, Tony Lafrano. A family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray, pray together as a family. And now to our drama, The Crossroads of Christmas, starring Victor Jory as Matthew and Rita Johnson as Sarah. The time was dark and troubled. The heel of the oppressor ground into a prostrate and captive world. Injustice and favoritism sat in high places, while fear and despair were the daily fare of the unhappy millions. Hope was a luxury denied to all, except fools and children. Faith was a starveling in a famished world, and love was yet to be born. But hate was active, and rebellion, Bitter little displays of violence, as when a stone is hurled from a sullen crowd into a line of soldiers. Don't let that boy get away! Stop him! He threw the stone! Clear the way here! Clear the way! By Jupiter, I'll break my way through. The centurion is bleeding badly, sir. Take a detail. Carry him back to our quarters. Yes, sir. Did the attacker escape, sir? All the moment. Quiet! Quiet! I suppose you're all congratulating yourselves that an officer of the Empire has been struck down? Let me tell you that your greasy satisfaction is premature. I saw that young dog, and I know it was not an accident that he got away. You all helped him, and for that reason, you're all equally guilty with him and should be punished. <laughs> However, I'm prepared to be generous. Give me his name, any one of you, and the rest will be spared. If you don't give me that traitor's name, you'll all suffer. No one is to leave this marketplace until I'm told who it was who hurled that stone. Is that clear? I'll give you a few moments to contemplate the futility of resistance. Then if no one has supplied me with the boy's name, we shall begin systematically flogging you, one at a time, until every treacherous back in this marketplace is bleeding. There's your choice. Supply the information or suffer the consequences. I've never seen its like. The streets are teeming. Where have all these people come from? There are many who claim descent from David. Well, I've no complaints. The decree has filled my inn for the first time in many years. Yes, every room is full, Matthew. And I've turned many away. You're tired, Sarah. You've worked too hard. <laughs> Old age. I tire quickly these days. Hasn't the boy helped you? He, he helped earlier. Well, where is he now? I sent him to the marketplace. I needed some spices. When was that? He's been gone quite a long time, but you know how he is. Yes, I know. He has no respect for authority. And yet, I think he's grateful to us, Matt. He speaks of his gratitude, Sarah, but his words are empty. See, when he could be helping you, he's lazing in the marketplace, taking up with thieves and cutthroats who hang out there. Oh, he's quick-tempered and willful, but he's not a bad boy. He'll bring trouble to us, Sarah. Oh, if he could feel closer to you, Matthew. I have done my best. When he first came to us after your sister's death, I wanted to think of him as my own son, but he despises me, Sarah. Oh, no, Matthew. He's as good as told me that I'm a stupid old man content to compromise with the Romans. He has no respect for me, no love. Oh, he's not an easy boy to know. There's a thread of violence running through him, but if you'd try again, Matthew... Well, I'm too tired to speak further of him tonight, Sarah. Since we had no son of our own, I had hoped... What? What could that be? More travelers seeking lodge, I suppose. Sarah, let me in quickly. Ah, sir. 
What is it? Oh, good What's evening, Arthur. No, Matthew, an evening for sorrow. A fearful evening. What is it, Arthur? Your nephew. I knew it. Oh, is he in trouble? I was on the edge of the crowd in the marketplace. The soldiers were parading, impressing all the poor country folk who've come in to enroll. Your nephew was there. I sent him to buy spices. Now, I wasn't close to him, but I could see him clearly. As the soldiers passed, he picked up a rock and hurled it at... Well, the centurion was struck. And the boy, did they take him? No, he escaped. Oh. Did the Romans know who threw the stone? They're holding everyone who was in the marketplace until someone gives them the name. And it's only a question of time until the Romans come here, and when they do not find the boy, they'll take Sarah and me. Well, I, uh, I mustn't stay, Matthew. I, I only wanted to warn you. You're a good friend, Asa. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to have brought you such bad news, Matthew. God be with you. Thank you, Asa. It was a great risk you took. God be with you. They'll kill him, Matthew. There's nothing we can do to save him. Or to save ourselves. He's not bad. He strikes out with no thought of consequences for others. It's the Romans. They've come for him. Oh, I've never known a Roman to knock so gently. We know nothing of him, do you understand? We're not in sympathy with him or his ideas. I beg your pardon. I know it is late, but I'm seeking a night's lodging for... We're full. No rooms left. It's the same wherever we ask... If there were a corner, any shelter at all from the night's chill... Didn't you hear? We've nothing for you. I thank you. I did not mean to anger you, sir. It's just that we have traveled far and my wife is... Your wife? Is she with you? Yes, and she is very tired. But I will not trouble you further. If you have no room... Wait. What are you thinking of, Sarah? There's the stable, Matthew. If they'd like to stay there. Sarah, with all this trouble, we can't... The stable would be fine. Any shelter. I don't think we can possibly... Oh, please, Matthew. His wife seems so tired, and she's with child. <sighs> Very well. You may lodge in our stable. I'll take them around to the courtyard, Matthew. This is most kind of... Don't you. thank me. Thank my wife. Uh, oh, uh, what's your name, traveler, for my records? I am Joseph, son of Jacob, carpenter of Nazareth. <laughs> If there's anything else I can do, call me. I won't be asleep. You've already been most kind. We thank you. Good night. Good night. And Sarah. Oh, oh you frighten me. What have you done? What have you done? Have the Romans come for me? No, but Arthur says they'll be here soon. We thought you had gone into the hills. I didn't have any money, Aunt Sarah. What were you thinking of? Why did you do such a thing? I don't know. I couldn't help myself. I stood there watching them strut past, pushing us off our own streets, lords of the earth, and all of us no more than dirt under their feet. I, I had to do something. Oh, they'll kill you. How did we fail you? I so hoped when you came to us. Does Uncle Matthew know? Yes. And he disowns me? He's worked all his life to build something here and so now. So long as he's comfortable, he doesn't care how the Romans kick the others. What are you going to do? If I could hide until they've searched the inn, and then with money and food get into the hills... Where could you hide that the Romans wouldn't find you? There's a place in the stable no. behind the stalls. No, no, you can't hide in the stable. There are lodgers. Lodgers? You mean in his greed Uncle Matthew now rents the stable? The inn was full, and this poor carpenter from Nazareth came to the door, and I persuaded your uncle to let them stay in the stable. His wife is with him, and she just gave birth to a son. Then it's hopeless. I might as well give myself up to the Romans, but I'll go down throwing more rocks. No, no, no. We'll talk to your uncle. Maybe he'll be able to help you out. I don't count on his help. Well, come inside at least. Someone will see us standing here in the courtyard now. Come in. <laughs> I shouldn't have come back. Would have been better to starve in the hills or die in the streets fighting the Romans. No one's keeping you here. Matthew. Wherever he goes, he brings grief. Everything he touches turns to violence. Because I'm not content to live like a slave. Because I'm ready to give up my soft life, this, this security and a fight for freedom. Because I think of someone besides myself. You're the most selfish kind of person. To cut a dashing figure, to set yourself up as a hero, you bring the Roman lash down upon dozens of innocent backs. Someone has to strike out at them. No one beats the Romans at their own game. Hit one of them and they'll crucify a dozen of us. 
because you hurled one stone, we're all marked as criminals and may die for it. I don't care. As long as I live, I'll fight. And if it means killing, I'll kill. Oh, don't talk that way. You've gotten used to compromising. Well, that's not for me. I've chosen my way, freedom at any cost. Your way will carry you to a Roman cross, if not now, later. Oh, well, we mustn't waste time in quarreling. We must plan his escape. I can never get through the gates now. He thought of hiding in the stable. But the travelers from Nazareth are there. The carpenter looks to be a kindly man. If I asked him, explained about the boy... I'd not be in their way. I could hide in the straw behind the manger. The Romans will find him no matter where you hide him. And it will mean that we must lie to them. Matthew, he's my dead sister's only son. Oh, right. Hide him in the stable if the Nazarene will let you. But don't expect to save him, Sarah. Don't expect to save him. Open! Uh, in the name of Caesar! Huh? Are you the keeper of this inn, Matthew by name? I am. Where's your nephew? He's wanted for the murderous assault upon one of my officers. My nephew? Why, sir, he hasn't been home since early afternoon. You're lying, and it will do you no good to lie. You only waste my time. Search the inn! But my guests are all asleep, sire. They should be honored to awaken on the Emperor's order. You could have saved them this discomfort by telling us where you've hidden this bloody rascal. Believe me, sire, I'm innocent in all this. I should like to think you were. They tell me you've kept a good reputation in the past. My nephew is a wild boy. We tried to guide him, sire, but he listens to others. To those who preach rebellion in the marketplace, who sit in their rags and dream of a new kingdom. The boy is not in any of the rooms, sir. What about the outbuildings and the grounds? There's only a small stable in the courtyard. Search the stable. Yes, sir. But there's a poor carpenter there. His, his wife has just had a child. Do you think... Well, business must be good, innkeeper. You even rent your stable. Everyone has come to be enrolled. Yes, I think I'll have a look at this stable myself. You're wasting your time, sire. Let me be the judge of that. Show me this stable. Carpenter, man of Nazareth. Yes? Who calls me? It is the innkeeper. There has been trouble in the town. The soldiers seek my nephew. They asked to search the stable. My wife is resting. I'm told you have a son, Carpenter. A child was born to Mary. He lies now in the manger. You'll forgive me if I look in. Of course. I'll not disturb your wife nor the child. Forgive me, Carpenter. We force you into our trouble. You know that if the boy is found, you will be implicated. You did not refuse us, Haven, after we had been turned from a dozen other doors. We could not refuse him. Carpenter, you have a most unusual child. A, a new baby. And yet there is something about him... Congratulations. It seems, innkeeper, that you were telling the truth. Lucky that you were. My wife and I are deeply sorry, sire, that our nephew has made this trouble. We'll catch up with him. It may take time. But these violent young fools always pay our price. He struck once, he'll strike again. And eventually he'll pay. I know, sire. Carpenter, my apologies again for disturbing your wife and the child. Good night. Good night. He's not here! Return to the garrison at once! All right. All right. Ah, uh, they're leaving. Your nephew is safe. But he must still get past the guards at the gate and into the hills. He will find a way. You know, Carpenter, I never before heard a Roman soldier apologize, but, but he did to you for disturbing your wife and child. Strange. I'll tell your nephew it is safe to come out now. Wait. Listen, some new disturbance. Or perhaps the soldiers are coming back. No. No, these are not soldiers. They look to be shepherds. Yes, and Sarah's with them. Sarah, what is it? Matthew, these are shepherds from the hills. They have come into Bethlehem because... Because... Because an angel of the Lord appeared to us. An angel of the Lord? Oh, you don't believe us. And in truth, friend, we are hard-pressed to believe what we have seen this night. Uncle Matthew, the soldier's gone. Yes, they're gone. These men are shepherds. With a wonderful story to tell. No, I've no time for wonderful stories. I must leave Bethlehem before dawn. Wait. Wait, listen to what they've seen. We were resting in the hills. Some of us dozed. Then suddenly, there was a sound. A sound? As if a thousand hands struck a thousand lyres. And at the same time, there was a dazzling light, as if a star had burst. 
We were frightened. And the light. It was the angel. Yes. And the angel said, don't be afraid. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy. For there has been born to you today in the town of David a savior who is Christ the Lord. And sir, I can't waste my time listening to you. Be quiet. Go on, a savior who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. In a manger. Matthew, the child born to the carpenter's wife. Yes. What happened then, Shepherd? Then, where we had seen but one angel, there were thousands. The sky was ablaze with their glory. And they were singing until the very hills seemed to move with the majesty of their music. Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to men of good will. You... You think they spoke of the Messiah, our deliverer? We do. And we've come to Bethlehem to see this thing that has come to pass. Tonight, a child was born in this stable. He lies now in the manger. Carpenter of Nazareth, you have heard what these good shepherds have said. I have heard. May, may we see the child again? It is not for me to keep you from seeing him. But please remember that she is very tired. We'll remember. Matthew, can it be the Messiah born here in our stable? If we are to believe the shepherds. Surely they couldn't have all dreamed the vision. And the child is strangely beautiful. He's no ordinary child, Sarah. For him to come now, in the midst of our trouble, a promise of hope. Yes, like the song of the angels, peace on earth to men of goodwill. And Sarah, Uncle Matthew. Oh, oh, I forgot. I know how I can slip past the guards at the gate. How? I'll go out with the shepherds. I'll never be noticed as long as I stay with them. Well, I suppose that's best. Uh, here, here, take this purse. There's enough money in it to last for a while. Thank you, Uncle. Someday I'll repay you. You can repay us now. Promise that you won't make any more trouble. I can't make that promise. I wouldn't keep it. My course is set, Aunt Sarah. The Romans will learn to fear me. And someday I'll show our people the way to freedom. The way to freedom isn't hate. It could be his way. Yes. The way of the child in the stable. You mean that wild story the shepherds told, the angels and the song of peace? Yes, peace on earth to men of good will. If this child were the savior. I leave you to your foolish hopes, uncle. Only the Romans preach peace because it's the way to keep us slaves. I want no part of their coward's peace. Goodbye, Aunt Sarah. Goodbye. Be careful. We must return to our flocks. But we'll tell all of the wondrous things we have seen here tonight. My nephew begs to walk with you, good Obed. He leaves us now for Jerusalem. He's welcome. Come, brothers, we must hurry. Soon the dawn will be with us. Goodbye. Goodbye. He's gone, Matthew. We couldn't help him, Sarah. His way is set. So the good shepherds leave. The child sleeps, and so does his mother. What of your nephew, my friend? He goes with the shepherds. They'll see him safely through the gates. Carpenter, if carpenter you are, what have you to say of what the angels told? This child was sent to save our people. I, I want to believe this, but for the Messiah to be born here in, in a stable... His ways are not of this world, and he does not seek to save us by worldly power. To save us. And this, too, is the dream of Barabbas. Barabbas? Your nephew. Yes, but the dream of Barabbas and the way of this child are not the same. They'll never cross again. Because Barabbas thinks freedom can be bought only through violence. And this child comes as the Prince of Peace. Pray for my nephew, Carpenter of Nazareth. Pray that someday Barabbas may know that peace which comes to the men of goodwill. May we all know that peace. May we be worthy of him. Listen. What is it, Matthew? It was almost as if... For a moment, I heard that mighty chorus of angels making that beautiful promise again. Perhaps that music will be heard by all men who can find the courage in their hearts to believe that only love can free us. Yes, only love.
This is Irene Dunn again. I think the charming Christmas story we've just heard, or, or perhaps I should call it a profound Christmas story, strikes a chord of yearning in all our hearts, especially at this season. We all want peace so very desperately. Peace in the world, but also peace in our families, peace in our hearts and in our individual lives. The kind of peace that the world cannot give, because without God's grace, the world does not possess peace, and no one can give what he hasn't got. Family theater believes that to find true and equitable and abiding peace, whether among nations or in families, we must all of us turn to the divine source, the only fountainhead of peace, which is God. Peace on earth, yes, but note the condition, to men of good will. That is why Family Theater urges us all to pray, to pray with good will, and to pray together as families. Only in that way have we any chance to attain peace. The family that prays together stays together. And a nation at prayer is a nation at peace. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you The Crossroads of Christmas, starring Victor Jory and Rita Johnson. Irene Dunn was your hostess. Others in our cast were Eddie Firestone, Pat McGeehan, Howard Culver, Tudor Owen, and Michael Hayes. The script was written by John McGreevy, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us this coming Sunday when Family Theater will present a special hour-long Christmas program, The Joyful Hour, starring Licia Albanese, Anne Blythe, Scott Brady, McDonald Carey, Jeff Chandler, Perry Como, Gene Crane, Gene Cagney, Bobby Driscoll, Steve Dunn, Jimmy Durante, June Haver, Ruth Hussey, Bill Lundigan, Rita Johnson, Betty Lynn, Stephen McNally, Nan Merriman, Ricardo Montalban, Gigi Perot, Maureen O'Sullivan, Rod O'Connor, Brian Sullivan, and Robert Ryan. Check your local paper for time. Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.